chapter 9, verse number 33. It's a parallel passage here. The Bible says, And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, What was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? But they held their peace, for by the way... They had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. So obviously this was on their minds and they're, they're talking about it in Mark chapter 9 and disputing, well, who's going to be the greatest? Like, I wonder, like I'm saying, oh, I'm going to be the greatest. Or if they're saying like, well, Peter's going to be the greatest. Or John's going to be the greatest, right? They're saying, well, who is this going to be the greatest? And I, I think they were kind of um, maybe embarrassed because they were, they were having that conversation among themselves when Jesus asked them, and they, now they didn't want to say what they were talking about. They're like, hey, what was it that you guys wanted to know? Uh, nothing. <laughs> and then in verse 35, it says, because uh, it says in verse 34, they held their peace. They didn't say anything because that's what they were talking about. And verse 35, it says, and he sat down and called the twelve and saith unto them, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. The path to becoming first is to become last. That is the way that God operates. That is the way in God's economy how you want to succeed, you want to exceed, you want to become the greatest. And look, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the greatest, want to be the best Christian, want to be, you know, I don't, that's not like sinful to want to, to have that desire to, to, to be good, to be great, to, to excel. But if you want to know how to do it, it has nothing to do with self-aggrandizement. It has nothing to do with you boasting of yourself and, and putting it forward that you are some great person and some, some godly person. The way that you do that is by becoming the most humble person and literally being completely selfless. And Jesus was, that's why Jesus has a name which is above every name. Right? Jesus came and allowed his name to be despised and himself to be spit on and beaten and mocked and ridiculed and just made as the off-scouring of the world. And, but in so doing, he's going to have a name which is above all names and, and receive the honor due to him. Jonathan, sit still and pay attention. Flip over to Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. We're going to read again in, or I'm excuse me, Mark, Mark, Mark chapter 10. Mark 9, you're in Mark 9. You should just flip over to Mark chapter 10. Because Jesus said, if any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. You need to be a minister. You need to be able to serve other people. When you're proud, when you're lifted up, you think you're so great, you're not considering yourself being a servant. I mean, just think of any person in this world that's just thinking really highly of themselves? What type of attitude they have? Are they going to be the first person? If you think really highly of yourselves and you're walking around with that type of an attitude, are you going to be the person that's going to go and, you know, take someone's shoes off and wash their feet or, or just do anything, go and be a servant and serve other people? No. These are going to be the people that are going to walk in and expect to be served. They're going to expect to be waited on. They're going to walk in the door and be like, where's my seat? They're going to walk into the restaurant and just, just start talking down to people and just being like, yeah, give me my stuff. Because they feel like I am so special. I am great. I deserve this. You all need to be waiting on me. That's not the way God operates. He says, no, you need to be servant of all. You need to be the one just doing the serving and, and not looking to yourself to be lifted up. Mark uh, chapter 10, verse 42, the Bible reads, But Jesus called them to him, and saith unto them, Ye know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. He's saying this is the way it is out in the world. The people who are great and, and looked on as these great people, they are exercising authority over other people. They are exercising lordship over the other people and, and putting these people to work and having them underneath them and they're sitting up in these high positions. He says, but so shall it not be among you. He's saying, that's the way the world operates, but that's not the way that I want you to operate. He says, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister. And I went over this on Sunday as well. You know, we're talking about the, the titles of of a pastor in a church, we don't use the word reverend because reverend belongs unto God, but we do use the word minister, right? Because that is appropriate for somebody who's in the ministry, 
for someone who does pastor to be a minister and to serve other people. Now, while there is a responsibility and a role of being an overseer and looking out for things and managing things, the Bible is very clear that the, the pastor or the elder is not to lord over the people. Jesus is referring to the Gentiles and to the world as they lord over people. That's how they exercise their authority, but that's not the way things are supposed to run in the church. You are supposed to be able to, you know, every Christian in general, but especially, you know, when it comes to a pastor, you shouldn't have someone that's just lording over and telling everyone else what to do. They should be leading by example. Now, again, there is an authority behind the position and, and there is a management and things that need to be run, but at the same time, the job consists of service, serving, helping others, doing good, and, and ultimately it is doing the most to be the biggest servant that you can be. And that is how God is going to view you as being great. When you, are, when you think of yourself as just being, how can I help everyone else? And then actually following through with that. It's not enough just to have the attitude. You need to, to, ha to, to put that into action. To be of service to other people. 